Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So for today's video, I decided, or I realized, that it has been three years, over three years, since I last did a Q&A on my channel. So whoopsie daisy. I think because I do my Makeup Dilemmas series where I answer makeup dilemmas from yourselves, makeup problems, makeup issues that you need my help with, I kind of think that I do Q&As regularly, but obviously that's kind of a different thing, a different beast to actually a Q&A and ask me anything type video, more about myself, or just questions that you've been nosy and interested about learning. So I thought we'd do that today and I can only apologize that it's been so long. So I put a post on my community page asking if anyone had any questions that you wanted to include. So thank you so much if you asked a question and gave me something great to work with this video. As always, you guys are so helpful when I ask you to contribute to my videos. So I'm really, really grateful for that. I will just say there were a few questions in there that I have answered multiple times before. The main ones being about my job and also about my previous swimming career. So if you're interested in those two questions, my job, my career outside of YouTube, then please check out my previous Q&A because I feel like we I gave a much more comprehensive answer in that video and I don't want to repeat myself and not answer some newer questions. So if you have a question about my job, my career, my swimming career previously, then please check out that initial Q&A because all of that information is covered in that first one. So let's get started. This first question is from Escape Reader. Would you describe your laminated brow? I don't know anything about them. So yes, I have my brows laminated. I they are unfortunately just about to be done again in a few days time. It's been about eight weeks. So I can't really show you them. They're obviously not fresh. At this point, eight weeks after I've had the process, I've had them laminated. The only difference really is that they respond way better to hold products like gel. So I can use gel through my brows now and they will stay where I've put them with gel. But initially when I have my brows laminated, it essentially makes them completely stay wherever and however you put them. Lamination is a chemical process. So think like perming, think like relaxation on hair, or relaxing on hair, then though those those are similar processes to brow lamination. It basically makes them completely smooth and straight. And what it does is it just gives you the flexibility to move your brows and place them wherever you like and them to stay completely there until you tell them otherwise. So what you see when you like Google about brow lamination is that completely flat like flattened against your skin look, which is how they are when you first have them done. But they don't have to stay like that. You can fluff them up, you can move them about, you can have them more natural. It just basically gives you complete and utter control of your brows. So if you have unruly brows, if you have gaps in your brows, if your brows don't stay in place, if gel doesn't work for you, it's fantastic. I cannot recommend it highly enough. I love it. This will be my third time doing it. I have it done every eight weeks and I cannot foresee that changing anytime soon, I have no regrets. But if you wanna learn no more about exactly the process, I don't know anything about it. So I would suggest Googling it because I just leave the brow pros to do their thing. So the next question is from Julie, what product do I want Lisa Eldridge to come out with next? I mean, anything, I'll take anything. I'm not really bothered about having eyeshadow from her at all, to be honest. I feel like she's, for me, when it's Lisa, what I love about Lisa, it's like skin. The lip products are off the scale incredible, but I feel like we've got now glowy lips. I'll take more colors for sure with her luxuriously lucent formula and her mattes, I'll always take more colors for sure. But you know, obviously we have a big range now of lip products from her. We've now got her foundation. I guess it would have to be concealer next. That's kind of the natural next step. And primer as well. I feel like Lisa would make a phenomenal primer if her foundation's anything to go by. Next from Nicola, just wondering if you still love MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I recently watched an old video of yours where you cited this concealer as your holy grail. My days. That must have been 
a very, very old video, a very old video. I don't think I've used Mac Pro Longwear Concealer for like three years, maybe longer. Very, very, very long time ago since I used that concealer. Definitely not my holy grail anymore. I feel like I've talked a lot about my favourite concealers on this channel. The Pat McGrath concealer is my absolute ride or die. I love the new Tom Ford. Um, I also previously liked the Hourglass one, the Estee Lauder, the Shiseido. MAC is like nowhere on that list anymore. It's a little bit that newer. All of the ones that I prefer are came out after the MAC Pro Longwear. That was kind of one that you know, was before all of the ones that came since that beat it out the park. But also that's just one that didn't work as well on me as I got a bit older and it just creased a lot more and didn't give me the coverage that I wanted anymore. So yeah, that is definitely old news. Nicola also asked if I still dye my own hair at home. Definitely not. Definitely this is not L'Oreal Black Cherry. I will say that. I definitely don't do it myself anymore, I could never. I don't really do hair videos on my channel, the main reason being that just nobody watches them. I've done a few in my time. I have a hair playlist on my channel, but as you will see if you check those videos out, they just don't get views. Nobody's interested in hair from me. And I know that there's always a few people who are interested in certain things, but for me, if I do a couple of videos on hair or fashion or something a bit different from my kind of bit like everyday beauty makeup content and it, tanks and it doesn't do well I don't really want to keep doing it because it's just obvious that you know the bulk of my audience aren't interested and the bulk of my audience clearly aren't interested in hair videos because that no one ever watches them which is fine but I don't want to keep repeating the same mistake but yeah I get my hair now coloured probably every six months, something like that. I have a very low maintenance hair color. That's what my hairdresser is all about. And yes, yeah, so I've started trying to remove the black cherry. The years of black cherry that's built up on my hair is now working its way slowly out the door. So that's what I do now. And as far as um, my air wrap, I just feel like there are, I have nothing to add. There are so many great air wrap videos on YouTube and I don't do anything different. I don't know anything special. I would definitely recommend just watching a load that are already on YouTube. They've definitely way more information in those than I have to share. And yeah, so I am no professional. I love it. I used it today on my dry hair. So it's not quite as perfect as if I do it from wet, but as you can see, it still gave me a nice little bit of shape and a volume to the hair. But yeah, I don't have anything to add. I feel like there's already so many air wrap videos. I don't know that I can add anything to what's already there. Rachel Tucker asks, when spraying perfume, do you rub your wrists together? No, Rachel, no, we do not do that. Do not, do not do that. Stop it. Also on, so on soothes, on clothes, on clothes or in the hair, not in the hair, Rachel, not in the hair and not rubbing wrists together. Cut that out. So here's the thing, rubbing wrists together, there are people who believe that that smushes, it's called bruising the molecules. If you do this, if you spray your perfume, you do this, it's basically, it affects the perfume. What I feel like, I don't think anything terrible is going to happen. I think you'll be fine, but it can basically wipe out the top notes. That's what I understand. So that's not recommended. It's also not recommended to put it in your hair because it's full of alcohol, which is very damaging for hair. So no, I will spray one spray on each wrist and then on my neck. I don't purposely spray it on my clothes. I spray my perfume before I get dressed. So obviously it can get on my clothes, but I don't purposely spray my clothes. Um, you know, high sort of oil content in perfume can actually stain clothing. So I don't do that. I just spray a couple of sprays on my neck, one on each wrist and do not rub them together and never in your hair. Stop that instantly. I beg of you. Tammy asks, being a true crime fanatic, I'd like to know who your favorite serial killer is. I'm not a big fan of any of them, but I, I, I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. I think I don't really have a specific case or a specific person, I guess, a specific murderer that I am like especially intrigued by. What cases that seem to like, that I 
find stick with me and I think about all the time and I, I watch every documentary that comes out on are typically like the unsolved ones or the unresolved cases that I just I find that really hard to let go of like I just keep on for example the um Madeleine McCann case or the staircase I know in in lots of people's mind that was solved or is solved to me that case really bothers me just because I really I just need to know what happened and why like I that I I feel like that's just never been answered with any kind of confidence and there's just some bonkers theories relating to that case so those are the cases that kind of stick with me because we haven't got a resolution and I just re like I could just read and read and read on the case and just try to take all the information in I feel like every time there's a new documentary John Benet Ramsey that's another one um that I read every time a new program a new documentary a new book comes out about those cases it's like there's a different perspective every time and different theories put forward every time and they just sit with me and bug me because I just wish they would be resolved for the family and just with that everybody could have a solution to them but the, yeah those are, I don't tend to sort of you know get fascinated with specific murderers or anything like that for me I just I'm fascinated by the cases and the process one of my I had a lot of questions asking me about my favorite like true crime programs to watch I don't really do podcasts or I don't do podcasts but I do read a lot of books and watch a lot of documentaries I really liked there's um, a program called The Real Detective that has interviews with the people who the real people who solved the case as well as like reenactment like a dramatized version of events I find that really fascinating um I like Dateline snapped I love 48 hours or 24 hours in police custody which one is it 24 or 48 whichever one that is 24 hours I think it's in police custody I find that fascinating I love to see interviews that's kind of my most fascinating bit I love to watch the police interviews and the interrogations I just find that really fascinating body language things like that that's kind of the bit that really intrigues me probably the most gripped I've ever been by a true crime program would be the staircase I just find it I found it so fascinating because it just showed everything even them coaching is it My Michael Peterson even co the coaching how he would be in his body language and what he wore in court and all of those things I found all that whole process gripping I've probably watched that whole documentary like three or four times and all of the other ones as well Carol asks what's your favorite contour I have a medium golden skin tone every product I've tried pulls muddy or gray my favorite contour these days is the Victoria Beckham the duo so this is bronzer and contour so this is the bronzer this is the contour as you can see it's just not that cool it's more of a neutral and that would be my suggestion if you have a really warm undertone to like go with something super cool even for a contour is is probably going to be a mistake but this one for me, it's cooler than the bronzer, but as you can see, it's still got a bit of warmth in there. It's more about adding dimension than really replicating a super cool shadow. So that would be my suggestion. That's definitely my favorite contour. I used it on my nose today, but I didn't contour on my face. It's just very natural, very easy to work with. And there are different shades as well to play around with. I have the shade four, but yeah, you can use obviously a lighter or a deeper shade and they're all slightly different, but that's my favorite of all time. Ariane asked with lockdown what was the hardest thing was there anything that surprised you that was actually good I think to be honest we were very lucky with lockdown I think as soon as we heard and knew that it was really happening the initially we very much made as a family like a conscious decision that we were going to make it as a positive and embrace what was ultimately an opportunity that we would never have normally got so that opportunity to be together as a family my husband not having to go to work my husband not having to travel and be away the kids being at home with us so much we decided to look on it as positively as we possibly could and for me having young children go through that lockdown I really did not want them to like lose 
a year of their lives at such an important age for that to like year to feel like it just was lost that was just not an option for me so I think we decided very early on we were going to use this time we we're going to make memories we were going to make it happy and positive and not scary and I just have such amazing memories from that whole time even when we had to start homeschooling that was terrifying to me I was so worried about homeschooling and that's probably the thing that surprised me the most is actually I really enjoyed it it was again such an opportunity to learn with your children and to see how they learn and see what they know and see what they're doing at school it was just a joy and it really helped me be like involved in their school life which normally we don't get the opportunity to do that so that was you know it was really uh, the whole the whole lockdown for us I just have amazing memories and I'm so glad because I really just could have would hate my children especially, to have feel like they just lost a year of their lives was instead, we actually really thrived through that whole time and really loved being together. That's not to say we didn't have difficult days or days where they were upset. The worst thing was obviously missing our family. Um, so we did a lot of FaceTime calls and a lot of video chats and just playing and games and things like that. So that for me was really the the negative was obviously missing our families and our friends and being able to see the people that we love but as a family unit I feel like we just really made like the most of it and the best of it and we tried to look on it as positively as we could. So Amber asked what would your number one makeup brush be for each category? I feel like that's like a whole video like we'll be here forever if I go through every single makeup brush for each category. So maybe if enough people if you let me know down below if you're interested in that video I can definitely do that but I think if I start doing that now we're going to digress and this video will be three hours long. Maria says um, that she loves that I'm a fellow weight trainer and really enjoy when you share your training on Instagram so if you don't follow me on Instagram I do um, show my training sessions, my weightlifting sessions whenever I feel like it on my Instagram so if you were interested in that then go follow me there. So Maria wants to know what my favourite training clothes are. I get a lot of stuff from Gymshark, Love and Other Stories has some really great stuff, ASOS, Nowhere Unexpected, um, all the usual places. What is my favourite exercise? I mean I just love lifting, I don't really have a favourite exercise, I have a few dreaded exercises that I hate. I really, really hate single leg lunges. They're like on single leg squat, anything on single legs. I just like my legs to be together. I like them both to work in harmony. I don't like to split them up. But yeah, favourite exercise, I don't really have one. I, I, I love all lifting exercises. I love lifting weights. It's my, my favourite thing to do. It's my peace, my my time, my my time, my me time. And my therapy, so... Susan wants to know if I was being held hostage with Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona and Charlotte Tilbury and I negotiated for him to let me go along with two of my fellow hostages, who would I take with me? Well, here's the thing. Very hard to choose between those three. But I do feel like if we're looking at those three women as hostages, the one that I feel like actually she'd be fine, she could fend for herself would be Pat McGrath. I feel like Charlotte Tilbury, like I'm not, she's too, she's too nice. I can't see Charlotte Tilbury fighting her way out of a hostage situa situation. I don't know if that's just me. Natasha, I don't know. I, she's definitely got some fight in her, hasn't she? She could be like a dark horse when it comes to, you know, what she's got, what she's got in a, in a hostage situation. But Pat McGrath, I'm not being funny. She's from Northampton. She 100% can handle herself. She absolutely can. I'd back her in a fight. So I'm going to leave Pat. I'm. I, she's 100% going to be fine. I'm going to take Charlotte and Natasha. Pat's going to fight her own way out. I'm very confident. Garn Walker asks, am I still an avid swimmer? I really rarely swim, to be honest. I swim on holiday. I take my kids swimming but I rarely go and swim laps by myself. The main reason being that public sessions are not a good place for me to be. Like, it's just, I can't swim how I'd want to swim in a public session. Like, it's just a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's not a fun time either. People are trying to race me or they're just in my way. 
So that's tricky. I have no desire to like join a club or like to train again. So yeah, I like to just paddle up and down. I need my own swimming pool. That's kind of on our list for our next house move. So then I would probably swim more. But yeah, for me, it's not an enjoyable time to get in a public session and swim around trying to you know, just keep out of the way and keep other people out of my way. It's not fun for me. But yeah, I do swim when I'm on holiday, swim when I have my own pool, my own space and swim with my kids. But yeah, I def definitely don't race, compete, train in the pool anymore. I really wonder how you manage to balance YouTube, full-time professional life, daily chores and kids. Do I get support, etc. So I don't work full-time. That's the first thing. After I had my son, my youngest, I was, I went back to work three days a week. So that was kind of when I first had my son. And that's around the time I started my channel. When I first started my channel, I was only uploading one video a week, which is very manageable uh, for me with that situation. Um, then I went to, with COVID and everything, First of all, initially I went to being a contractor. So, you know, I pick up bits of work here and there. Um, I'm not in a certain number of days a week. So again, that was pretty easy to kind of juggle the two. And then when my children started school and I lost basically all of my contracts over COVID and I'm just now trying to basically get back to work properly. Um, then it was like I had all the time in the world. Obviously my children are in school five days a week and I've only got very, very minimal bits of work here and there. So it's, for me, it's, it's it's not a lot of balancing. I don't have any support. We don't have family that are nearby at all or anything like that. So I've never had any help or support with my children, with my jobs, things like that. When I was working, my children went to nursery and obviously now they're at school. So yeah, for me, yes, there's a bit of balance and commitments and kind of doing things when I can. When my husband travels with work, it gets a bit trickier uh, just with, you know, picking everything else up on my own and things like that. But we manage. It's all fine. So Susie says, can you please recommend the best primers for combo skin, oily in the T-zone and dry on the cheek? So I don't have combo skin. I have no dryness in my skin. In my skin? I have no dry skin to speak of. Uh, oiliness, I can sometimes get a bit of a shiny nose by the end of the day. That's about it. So I, it's not an issue I have myself necessarily, but I do know from just watching lots of people with combo skin that a lot of people with combination skin use different primers for different areas of the face. So a very hydrating primer on the perimeters and where you're dry and then a mattifying primer down the center of the face. I've used the MAC um, skin fix, whatever that one's called before. And I've just received the new NARS pr matte primer as well, which is a really nice one. So yeah, that would be my advice is to actually use a couple and use them in the different areas where you have those different issues to combat rather than just using one one does it all, if you like. So different primers, different jobs for different areas of your skin with different skin concerns. That would be my tip. Alice says, you have the cutest style of clothing. Thank you so much. How do you know what colours and style look good on you? I think it's really just a trial and error, to be honest. I've definitely found that for me, sort of richer, more vibrant colours suit me best and actually more muted colours typically don't suit me as well. But it really is just about just trying and finding the colours, trying different colours on and seeing what suits you. I think it's a really good thing to play around with and just really over time. I think it's one a thing that we get a lot better at as we age. Like when I look back, I had no idea what I was doing or wearing when I was younger. And now I just feel like over time, I found my style, I found what I like, I found what looks good on me, colours that suit me. And it's just all trial and error. Dolores says, it feels like I just can't do my makeup well. Really frustrating because I love makeup, but sometimes I feel like I look worse after makeup. I think the biggest thing is it's practice. That's what it is. I definitely, I mean, if you looked at my, my earliest videos on YouTube, which is when I was first getting into makeup, the difference is night and day. And the only difference is practice, watching videos from professionals, people who are very good at teaching, the likes of Wayne Goss, Robert Welsh, um, who else? I used to watch a lot of Desi Perkins, Jacqueline Hill back in the day, and just learn from those pros, 
watch the people that you smith and Deepak at the moment one of the best channels on youtube for learning i would watch a lot of her videos tutorials and just practice don't be afraid of it practice keep making mistakes and learning from them and you'll get better and better lisa asks how do you add sunscreen over makeup during the day or do you no lisa I don't, I don't add sunscreen over the top of my makeup during the day. What I tend to do, if it's like summer and I know I'm gonna be outside for a long time, I either don't wear makeup so I can just apply my SPF or I'll use something like my Trini London BFF cream that can be easily just reapplied and I keep my makeup very minimal or I go makeup free and just wear SPF or I'll take a visor with me and just keep out of the sun. I'm really not, you know, outside all day for hours on end a lot of the time in a situation where I'm wearing a full face of makeup. So yeah, for me, it's not, not something I really worry about. I'll apply, I'll reapply if I'm outside on a hot day for a long period of time I just won't wear makeup um but yeah it's really just something I don't worry myself too much about I wear SPF every day and I have it in my moisturizer sometimes in my makeup products there's not really enough in those to do a lot but yeah in summer I use an SPF on its own but I just really don't spend vast hours out in the sun with makeup on yeah I don't reapply it SPF over makeup. I know no way of doing such a thing. I know there are powders with SPF in it and sprays and things like that, but I feel like that's going to have a certain effect on your makeup anyway. So yeah, that's that's kind of my thing. I just either don't wear makeup if I want to reapply or I do when I just kind of keep out of the sun for too long. I had a couple of people asking me what advice I would give to like my younger self. And honestly, I, I don't, I mean, here's, here's the thing. At the moment, there are certain things, certain conversations I'm having with my daughter, and I remember going through these things as a little girl, and like I'm talking to her about them and trying to help her through them. But ultimately, I, there's just nothing, I, you can't save yourself, you can't save these children from going through certain like rites of passage of part of growing up. So, you know, things like dealing with crushes and periods, and getting used to your body changing or something embarrassing happening at school and all these things, you can't stop them from happening. And if you do, you're really kind of doing that child a disservice anyway, is how I feel. All these things are part of growing up and learning. And I, as much as I can tell my children, you know, do this, don't do that, make sure this is how to avoid these things happening, they're probably going to not listen and it's going to happen anyway and they'll learn from it and we grow from every mistake that we make and that's kind of how I feel so really the only advice that I would give myself is like you're going to make mistakes you're going to get embarrassed a lot you're going to do things that you cringe about later but none of it lasts forever and it's fine and we all go through that and everybody is having all these same thoughts and feelings and that's really the only advice that you can give I feel like I don't think there's any point trying to avoid you know anything bad or painful or sad happening to you throughout your life and things like you know I, I could tell myself not to marry that first man that I did but then I don't know that I would have met my current husband so you know these things work out in strange mysterious ways and I think we every painful awful terrible situation that I've been through has definitely led to an amazing new path so yeah I don't know that I would give myself any advice really other than it's all going to be fine in the end. So Magic Dark Star asks what made you want to start YouTube? What was your first video about? What products did you use? No idea, no idea. I deleted like the first 20 videos that I made on YouTube because they're just awful and embarrassing. I think the first ever video I did was an intro. I did an intro to my channel, like a hi, I'm Charlotte. This is what my channel's gonna be about. I've deleted so many older videos just because they're terrible and I don't want them on the internet anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I have no idea what the first video was. It's long gone now. Um, but yeah, they were all terrible, but we learn from them. That's the that's what matters. So Kelly says, can you please post a 45 minute or an hour video of me just reading a book any book will be fine because my voice is soothing and it's helpful to sleep. Here's the thing, Kelly. 
I actually last year spent some time thinking about and trying to start a channel very much along the lines of what you're asking for, but it's actually illegal to do that. I cannot read a book that someone else has written and they own the copyright of that book. You're not allowed to. It's basically an unauthorized audio book is what I'd be doing. So I get a lot of these requests and a lot of people who've asked for something similar to that. And I just don't know how to go about it without breaching some kind of copyright. I'm only allowed to read or say my own words. I can't read a book. I can't read a poem or song words or lyrics or anything like that would be a breach of copyright ownership here on YouTube without the people's who's who own the rights to whatever that material is without their permission you're not allowed to do that so if anyone has an idea as to how to work around this um I do write myself but I don't have an endless supply of stories to read out so yeah I have definitely considered doing that but I cannot find think of a way to get around the copyright issue so if you have any ideas let me know rakers asks what's the biggest bias you've had to face as a british woman in the beauty community i don't think bias is something that i've had an issue with or i faced here on youtube certainly nothing like what every other a minority or gender would have, you know, males in the beauty community, people of colour in the beauty space, much, much more difficult than anything I've had to face. I think for me, the biggest challenge related to me being British is issues with obtaining products, getting new releases, getting access to a lot of brands that we can't get here and certainly brands that release much, much sooner in the US. Also, the audience that I'm given as a Brit on the YouTube space is very difficult versus being an American. So the way YouTube works is you're shown to your own country first. And then if you do well in your own country, you might get shown to other countries next. So obviously being British, my country is much, much smaller. The number of viewers, the opportunity to be seen here is much, much smaller than the opportunities if you're a US based channel. And the issue is the vast majority of my audience actually is American, but I won't get shown there unless I do very, very well in in the UK. So this is the biggest issue that you face. There's a lot of challenges. It's far more challenging being in the UK to get products, to get access to brands, to get them quickly. There are products that don't come here for months after the US. And obviously that's very, very damaging trying to grow on YouTube. So it's definitely tough. It's definitely tricky, but not because in like, not specifically because I'm a British woman, but because of the way YouTube works and the way that the beauty industry works and how they release products and the brands we have access to here. Joy asked, what are common makeup mistakes or issues you see on other people when you walk around London? I don't, I don't walk around London. I don't live anywhere near London, so I don't walk around London. But I will just say, I've never ever, have I ever noticed any makeup mistakes on anybody. I never ever have seen someone and thought, oh, that's a mistake. I've, I don't, I don't pay attention, is what I'm saying. Cynthia asks, how difficult was it to start a YouTube channel? What's the most challenging aspect? Was it the actual filming, etc.? What advice do you have for someone who's considering starting now? The best advice really is just to start, just to start. You, That's the only way to start is to start, you know, with whatever you've got. I would definitely advise not going out and spending a fortune on cameras and lighting and backdrop stuff and editing software, etc., before you've started. Because here's, here's the thing, you have no idea really how it's going to go, whether you're going to enjoy it, whether you're gonna be good at it and whether you want to actually keep doing it for any length of time. It's my, my kind of tough love advice would be that YouTube is definitely a marathon, not a sprint. It's very, very highly unlikely and very rare these days that anyone is going to be making any money or getting any views and subscribers within the first two or more years. And many, many channels will be going for years and never even get to the monetization level. So a thousand subscribers. That's definitely a, a very real possibility. 
and it's very unlikely that you're going to be making any kind of like income or profit from YouTube in the first couple of years. It's going to take a long, long time to grow to that to that size and to get views and to get subscribers. It's very, very hard and it takes a very, very long time. So I think that as long as you're realistic about that and you understand it's gonna take a long, long time, you're just gonna have to learn as you go, like everybody does, unless you're like a videographer or your dad or your partner is, you're just gonna have to make a video and the first one's probably gonna be rubbish, but everybody's is and you'll learn from that one and the next one will be a little bit better. And then over time, like I said, no one watched my, my channel for like the first year it was like minimum I remember one video when I got seven views and I was like what's the point what am I doing here there's more people in this house than watched that video you know that's that's how it starts but you know each video you learn something so it's not a waste and even if no one watches it it's still experience and a learning exercise. So I think as long as you realize that you're not gonna upload a video or you're highly unlikely to upload your first YouTube video and you're gonna get hundreds of subscribers and thousands of people are gonna watch it and by the end of the year, you'll be able to quit your job. I'd say that's really the probably least likely thing that's going to happen. So be in it for the long haul. Don't throw money at it to begin with until you're sure it's for you and you're sure that it's what you want to do and just be prepared for it to be hard and a long road. But if you're doing something that you really enjoy and you're really passionate about, it just doesn't really matter and you should just see it as fun and a hobby and fake it till you make it. A few people asked me about where I like to go on holiday or where I would like to go in future. So we, every year, we have a whole family holiday in Portugal. We've been doing that, I mean, long before my children were born, probably 10 or more years, we've been going to Portugal at least once a year. And that's my mum and dad, my sister and her family, and me and my family, and we would get a villa together for a couple of weeks, and we just have a blast. So that's kind of like, my set holiday every year and then my husband and I we would go to a different destination every year before we had children now I like to stick to destinations that have short flights and that we know really really well and that are easy as far as food and things like that and that I feel are super super safe so that's kind of the places that we tend to go now so we stick to like the Canary Islands we love to go to Lanzarote as a family and we go to Tenerife we've been to Cape Verde we just like you know easier shorter flights and easier with children travel destinations. I definitely would love one day to go back to the Maldives. That's probably my like favorite destination, but I'd love to go with my husband and my kids when they're a bit older. I just think it's a bit of a mature grown up destination. I'd love to be able to stay in an overwater villa with them again, because that was just an amazing experience. But I think they're too young to really get the most out of it just now, but that is definitely somewhere I'd love to go. I'd also like to go to America. A lot of people ask me if I've ever been. I've never been to the US. I don't know why. We've just never got round to it, I suppose. And now I'd love to take them to Disney World. But again, I'm just that flight. I just want them to be a couple years older before we're doing that long of a flight because it's not a fun time. I also want my son to be a little bit older because he's still that sort of age where he probably won't really get them. He won't be able to go on all the rides. He won't get as much out of it. So I think when my son's a few years older, Disney World will be like perfect for us. Tonya wants to know what my favorite games are. I recently mentioned in a video that I love playing computer games. I mean, I think I have mentioned that before. I don't necessarily have a specific game that's my favorite. I like grew up playing Tomb Raider. So Tomb Raider has like a special place in my heart because I have loved it since I was like 13 or 14. I've played that game, every single version of it. I still play it now. I still get like these little, phases that I go through when I want to pick it back up and start doing Tomb Raider again. I love it. I was obsessed with Two Point Hospital. It's a bit like Sims, but it's a hospital. You run a, a hospital and I have been obsessed with that. Um, that, that I could do forever and a day. But the, also Sims I'll play. I don't love that as much, but I'll play Sims. I like all Mario sort of games. I love Spyro the Dragon as well. That's a favourite. But yeah, at the moment, all I get to play is Mario Kart because we've just got our Switch and my kids are obsessed. Yogi asks, what was my first big makeup purchase? I don't know that it's necessarily first big makeup purchase, 
But the first sort of higher end product that I remember buying was a MAC lipstick, which I think is probably most people's answer. It's a gateway brand, isn't it? But yeah, the first like product I remember is buying Pink Freeze Single Eyeshadow from MAC and Pervet, no, was it Pervet? I think Pervet was like a pink shimmery lipstick. Those were like the two first products I bought from MAC. I repurchased both of them like three times and that was, that was the beginning of it all. Banana Noodle, a fabulous name by the way, asked what, how do I know what shade of foundation you need when you buy new ones online now? I have a whole video on choosing your foundation online, which I would highly recommend watching because it has a lot of tips and tricks and everything I've learned over the years of having to do this. I now have it down to a fine art. There are many, many, many steps that I take when choosing a foundation online, if it, especially if it's not an obvious one, from using online shade matches, to comparing, to looking at swatches, to looking at the different images, when they have it on a model skin, that's really helpful. Obviously learning your undertones and reading the shade descriptions, etc., etc. But yeah, if you want the whole shebang and the whole thing that I go through, the process that I go through in choosing an online shade, highly recommend checking out that video because it's got a lot more detail in it about where I start, how I go about it. Anastasia asks, how do I maintain my weight and do I do date nights? And if so, where do I go? So I don't really, maintaining weight is of no interest to me. I don't, we don't have scales. When we had children, I got rid of our scales at the house. I don't want them to like see me weighing myself all the time or to think that they need to weigh themselves ever. So we don't have scales. I don't know how much I weigh anymore. I don't weigh myself. I don't care what I weigh. It's no, it's no bearing on my life. I lift weights because I love to be strong and I love to build muscle. So actually, if anything, I'm trying to increase my weight. <laughs> I'm not trying to lose weight, I'm actually trying to get heavier by building muscle. That's kind of my goal and that's what I like to do. I don't worry about what I weigh or anything like that. But as far as like my training, I weight train three or four times. If you're new here, you may not know my husband is, or his background is that he is a physical trainer. The very beginning of his life was, um, he was a PT. He then went into really high level strength and conditioning training and working with Olympic athletes on their physical fitness, physical training. He then went into start coaching for the skeleton sport, which is probably what you guys most say now. And now he's like a big high up boss man. So yeah, so that's kind of his background. He is a expert when it comes to physical fitness, training, etc. So he writes all my programs. He coaches me in the gym. He obviously knows all my injuries. He obviously knows all my goals. And so I just listen to him. I do what he tells me and I train three or four times a week lifting weights and that's what I do. As far as date nights, we don't do really date nights anymore. We used to like pre-children, but we don't have family that live close and I don't leave my children with with anyone who's not my parents so we do date days both me and my husband now pretty much work from home a lot of the time so we will go for lunch or we'll go for coffee and sometimes the cinema but we do it during the day so we have date days and not date nights so Mara asked, do I wear makeup if I don't have to go out or film? How comfortable or uncomfortable do you feel when you meet people and you're wearing zero makeup? So I if I'm now in lockdown, I was putting makeup on every now and then just to like feel normal. But in the normal world, I don't wear makeup if I'm not going out. And I quite frequently don't wear makeup when I am going out. If I'm going on school run, taking kids to swimming, gymnastics, or if I just don't feel like, feel like it, I don't wear makeup. I couldn't care less. I've not like what anyone thinks or care. Literally, here's, here's the thing. Here's something I learned or I just realized that is game changing if you're scared to leave the house without makeup, is that not one single person on this earth cares. Not one person is looking at your face thinking, oh, she is not wearing makeup today. No one is even gonna notice, no one cares. Nobody cares what you look like with or without makeup. N most people won't even notice that you're not wearing makeup. Nobody is interested and that is, the, the honest truth. So the only person worrying about it, I promise you, is you. 
I wear like no makeup 90% of the time. If I'm not filming, I didn't feel like it that day, or I'm not going somewhere special out for lunch, out for dinner or something like that, then most of the time I'm not wearing makeup and nobody cares. And I certainly don't care. Christina asked how I'm feeling. Thank you so much for asking. That's very, very kind of you and very thoughtful. I'm doing pretty good. I will say the last month and a bit has been a really tough time and continues to be a tough time with a lot going on. Obviously, you guys know that I lost my friend Mel a couple of months ago now. It seems crazy to say that it's been a couple of months, but it's almost been a couple of months. Um, and since that, there has just been so much other just sad news and just tough, stressful things going on um, in my life. And we've had just some real challenging times these last couple of months. My husband has been traveling for work a fair amount. Um, there's um, a little boy that is one of my son's good friends who was discovered that he has a brain tumour. So that has been incredibly sad and he's now undergoing some really serious treatment to try and fight that tumour. So that's been difficult. My entire family has had COVID at least one time. Um, some of my family members have been having operations and procedures and things like that have been going on. So all around it has been, there's just been a lot to deal with and it's definitely taken a bit of toll on me, on my happiness, on my mental health, but also on my channel. Like I found it really hard to want to film and to get up and to film and to have any interest in doing that. And it's just felt really meaningless for me recently. But I think I'm coming out of the end of that now. And it was definitely a bit of a, just a, a, a dip and a low moment. I took a little bit of time off from the comments. I think I should have taken some full time off and not worried about having uploads go up and things like that, um, which I find hard to do. So I think I'll take a big break at Christmas. Um, you know, content going up still, but I will pre-film and I'll take a good couple of weeks of just nothing social media wise. Um, and, and that will, you know, be the end of that kind of dull time, hopefully. RP asks, when you travel an aeroplane, do you carry your Pat McGrath mothership palettes? My mothership palettes do not leave this house. I'll just say that now. I, when I travel, aeroplane or not, None, no motherships are coming with me. They stay in my house. They're not leaving my house. This is where they stay forever. This is where they've come to die. I'm like, when I travel, I tend to take things that are very travel friendly, that are easy to replace, that are either like not super mega expensive, nothing limited edition, and nothing that if the whole bag smashed to smithereens or got lost, I would cry for. That's how I decide what I'm gonna travel with. Veronica asks if I'm in a relationship. So yes, I am married. I've been married for eight and well, nearly nine years now. Eight, let's eight, eight and a half. Let's say eight and a half years now. I have two beautiful children. And yes, that's a, a yes. Mylane asks, what was your life like before YouTube? It was exactly the same, except I didn't have a YouTube channel. That's the only difference. And I had a lot less makeup. So I think we're gonna have to call it a day there. This has been a very long video, so I can only apologize, but I wanted to answer as many, many questions I haven't really answered before as possible. As I said, if I didn't answer your question, I'm really sorry. I just don't want this video to go on for the rest of time. But if you are interested in my first Q&A that I did a few years ago, there's a lot more information there about things like my job, my swimming career, my, I think my divorce is in there as well, if you want to know about that. But yeah, that's, if I haven't answered your question, it may have already been answered in that first one. So go check that out. Thank you again for sending all your questions in. And I hope you found this interesting and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.